Matt from LeanStacks here. Welcome back to another episode in the LeanStacks Technology Education Series. In this episode, we introduce the Flyway Database Migration Script Library and its integration with Spring Boot. In previous episodes of the Spring Data Fundamentals series, we showed you how to initialize a database using standard schema and data scripts offered by the Spring JDBC framework. In this episode, you will learn how to use the Flyway library not only to initialize an empty database, but to automatically upgrade the database as new versions are released. Flyway is a library that automates database changes that accompany software releases. It's similar to Liquibase, but prefers convention over configuration, which I will demonstrate in just a moment. Imagine that a new release of your software includes a new column added to a table in your database. The Flyway library manages the automatic execution of the necessary database scripts to add that column removing that responsibility from the operator or release manager. Let's open the Spring Tool Suite and look at the current database automation employed by the Greeting Web Services project. A link to the source code illustrated in this episode may be found in the episode's description. I've opened the HSQLDB and MySQL Application Properties files. We're currently using the Spring JDBC Framework's Database Initializer. Each time the application starts, the initializer executes the schema script followed by the data script. It's understandable how this could work with an in-memory database like HSQLDB, where the database is completely destroyed when the application JVM is stopped. But what about a persistent database like MySQL? If we look at the schema script for MySQL, notice that each create table statement is preceded by a drop table statement to ensure that the database structure is recreated each time the JDBC initializer executes. While this approach works well for the initial creation of an application or for bootstrapping a unit test environment, it's not optimal for ongoing software releases. Let's see how Flyway solves this problem. When the Flyway library is present on the class path, Spring Boot detects it and applies the default Flyway configuration. Let's, let's begin by adding the adding Flyway to the Maven POM file. Since the Flyway dependency is included in the Spring Boot Bill of Materials, we do not need to include the version number of the dependency. Spring Boot uses the Flyway Properties class to auto-configure Flyway. The default configuration expects to find database migration files, or the script files that are used to update the database to new versions, on the project class path in a directory named db migration. Remember that the main class path root directory within the project is source main resources. Let's update the database configuration for the application. First, remove the Spring JDBC configuration properties. Next, let's override the Flyway Locations property to tell Flyway where to find the migration script files for each of our database engines. First, we'll update the HSQLDB properties and then repeat the changes again for our MySQL properties. Finally, let's create the corresponding directories within the source code project. As I mentioned earlier, Flyway uses convention over configuration. 
FlyAway does not require a configuration file which lists each of the database migration scripts and their order of execution. Instead, FlyAway employs a migration script file naming convention. Each FlyAway database migration file is named with a pattern which begins with the capital letter V followed by a version number. Now the version number doesn't use periods, but instead replaces those periods with underscores. After the version number are two underscore characters which separate the version number from the migration file name. The migration files do contain SQL and therefore are suffixed with .sql. Flyway will attempt to execute a single migration script for a given numbered version. You may not have more than one migration script for a single numbered version. Flyway executes the script in an atomic transaction to ensure that the changes are either committed or rolled back as a single unit. Let's illustrate the naming convention by converting the old database initialization scripts into a Flyway migration script. Let's begin with HSQLDB. Create a new Flyway migration script named v0 underscore 0 underscore 1, two underscores, and then initialize.sql. Copy the contents of the old schema initialization script into the new Flyway migration script file. Remove all of the drop table statements. Since Flyway will only execute a migration file one time, we do not need to worry about the tables already existing in the database from a prior initialization. This initialization script represents starting the database from, from being completely empty. Therefore, the drop table statements are not necessary. After completing the changes to to copy the schema file into the Flyway migration file, copy the old data initialization script into the Flyway script file. Repeat these steps for the MySQL initialization scripts, creating a single Flyway migration script file in the data MySQL migrations directory. Let's run the application to see Flyway in action. First, I'll use Maven and run the unit test suite. The unit tests leverage the HSQLDB database and will populate the database using our new Flyway migration scripts. The Maven script is completed and great, we can see that all of our tests have passed. Now let's run the application but use the Spring Profile for MySQL. First let's look at the MySQL greeting schema. Notice that it's completely empty. This makes sense because we're simulating a reset of the database or starting from a completely empty database. I'll start the application. I use the Java command line so that I can explicitly specify the MySQL profile should be the active profile.
I want to show you the logging statements created by Spring Boot recording Flyway's progress. We'll come back to this a bit later because in a later step we're going to add a second migration file and the logging statements will keep a complete audit record of Flyway's progress. Let's go back to MySQL. Notice that the greeting schema now contains all of the expected tables. Notice this additional table created by Flyway which records the status of each migration Flyway has processed. If you have access to this table, it's a great way to monitor the status of version database migrations over time. I'll quickly run a few transactions using the Postman RESTful web service client. It looks like the application is behaving normally. To properly illustrate how Flyway processes versions, let's create another migration script. Let's assume we've released version 0.0.1 .0 of our application containing the initial database structure. Now we're working on version 0.1.0 and we need to add some additional greeting rows. Let's begin by creating a second migration script named v0 underscore 1 underscore 0 followed by two underscores and then migration.sql first for hsqldb. Next, let's repeat those steps to create a MySQL migration file. Now these files are just going to contain three additional greetings for our database. But this will allow us to see how Flyway processes more than one file. Let's compile and run the application once again using the MySQL Spring profile. Let's take another look at that Flyway audit table. It now has a new row for the 0.1.0 version showing the timestamp the migration was applied to the database. Let's quickly run a few tests with Postman. As you can see, the search for all greetings has returned all five greetings now, as you would expect. Before we conclude this episode, let me show you one more nice feature of Flyway. If we scroll back in the application logs, you can see that Flyway records its analysis of the migration files each time the Spring Boot application starts. In our case, it tells us the total number of migration files analyzed, the current database version, and that it's applying migration version 0.1.0. .0. Almost every software project utilizes a database. Managing database upgrades that accompany software releases can be operationally challenging, especially when the software is implemented by a customer outside of your IT department requiring precise and detailed instructions. By leveraging a database migration library such as Flyway, you can effectively streamline the software upgrade process and eliminate manual database upgrade steps from the implementation or upgrade procedure. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Click the thumbs up button below to let us know you liked it. Not a subscriber yet? 
click the subscribe button below to get the latest episodes from Lean Stacks as soon as they're released. As always, you can find more information on LeanStacks.com. To view the complete repository illustrated in this episode, see the GitHub repository URL in this episode's description. 